Hello everybody, it's Jack here again with you. Today I want to talk about how early childhood or adolescent trauma or stress could have a long lasting impact on the individual and moreover how this early life trauma and stress such as witnessing a genocide or growing up poor or growing up malnourished could have detrimental impact on the offspring and even the second or third generation. In fact, we're beginning to show that there are mechanisms through which these early life stressors can be passed on through multiple generations. Well, have you ever been sitting around feeling super stressed, depressed, overwhelmed with so much going on in your life, thinking about school, work, bills, and you wonder with yourself like how am I going to deal with this with your eyes just kind of rolling around and being feeling overwhelmed and the one thing that you could only think about is sitting on an airplane and going to your favorite destination well do you ever wonder why do you feel this way are there people who don't feel as anxious or as depressed what makes you different what makes it so that some people are more susceptible than others. Well, we're beginning to unravel mechanistically that there are early life traumas and events that could have happened in the prior generation which could have been passed down to you currently. Now, have you sat there and thought about this and said, hmm, if that's the case, does that mean the trauma or the stress that I'm going through right now will have an effect on my offspring or my kids and their kids and their grandkids. Well, this is exactly we are beginning to unravel how chronic stress or early life trauma could have a detrimental impact on the offspring. Moreover, these earlier trauma could cause depression, anxiety in the offspring, and this could be passed down through multiple generations. In fact, studies in mice and rats have demonstrated that over 14 generations could, affect, could feel the effect of the trauma that was experienced by the initial individual. Therefore, understanding the mechanism through which these early trauma and stress could be passed down is important to understanding psychiatric diseases including depression and anxiety. People for example who have felt or have gone through a genocide, they not only would feel the anxiety and the depression of the trauma itself, but evidence now shows that these could in fact be passed down to multiple generations via mechanisms that are beginning to be unraveled. Another example is people who grew up in a poor neighborhood or grew up malnourished. These events could affect their own offspring and their grandkids. This is our genetic material called DNA. This is the mechanism through which we pass down our genes to our next generation and the generation after that. So how does the early life trauma or stressor or chronic stress affect the way we pass down these genes to our offspring and what kind of genes become on or turned off well there's a mechanism called epigenetic regulation epigenetics means let's for example assume somebody suffers an early childhood trauma what happens is the trauma causes modifications in the dna nucleotides which are the basic units of the DNA such as in this case the yellow star gets added onto the DNA in fact we're starting to understand when this happens inside the sperm or the egg this then can be transferred to the next generation so in summary what takes place is that the early life trauma causes a specific alteration in the epigenome of the, the person and this epigenetic change will then get passed down to multiple generations in fact these changes that happen in the genome are somewhat permanent 
and takes multiple and multiple generations before, let's say, a reset button can be hit. What we've been able to demonstrate in mice and rats is that adolescent and neonatal period is very critical. During this period of development, trauma, stressors, or any kind of uh, detrimental um, uh, impact on, on the psychosocial state of the individual could have a lasting impact on its epigenome, therefore on the sperm or the egg, and hence can be passed down through multiple generations. Now in adulthood, the effects are much, much more diminished. But in the neonatal and adolescent period, if somebody were to go through, let's say, witnessing a genocide, for example, then their offspring would be more susceptible to developing depression and anxiety. And in fact, this could be carried on through multiple, multiple generations. So the next time you're sitting at home feeling depressed or anxious or feeling overwhelmed, just remember that you're not alone. There are multiple people who are suffering from such things and now we're beginning to unravel the mechanisms in which these uh, psychiatric uh, disorders are being transmitted through multiple generations and as a result figuring out ways to intervene before the damage has been done. Therefore, in summary, it is important to take good care of yourself if you have anxiety, depression, as these effects could then be passed down to the future offspring. But let's not forget, grandpa, grandma, and mom or dad also contributed a little bit to this. And therefore, it's important to look back at them and make sure that they are also being taken care of properly. So in summary, this fascinating field of epigenetics is opening up new avenues for understanding psychiatric diseases and how they can be passed down through multiple generations. This is a booming field of science and with newer technologies in being able to study the epigenetic changes, we will be uncovering more exciting results as to how we can alter and, and best intervene to help those who suffer from anxiety, depression, and so on. I want to thank you all for listening and hopefully you've had a wonderful time watching this video and I will see you next time.